My daughter-in-law pretends to take care of me, but she hits me while I'm bedridden. She's so brazen. Even though we're family, my husband and sister-in-law don't listen to me. I thought I'd lose everything important to me, but I never expected something like that to happen to them. It's scary how karma works, isn't it? My name is Lily. The other day, I put a pocket tissue in my pocket and carried it around, which is unusual for me. As a result, I accidentally washed it with my clothes. I'm 40 years old. Thanks to that, my black pants look like clouds. No, it's not that beautiful. I'm getting older and a little more clumsy, but my clumsiness is cute. In the world, there are always people who are better than us. When I was in my 20s, my newlywed husband David suddenly spoke up. Are you ready to live together? Huh? Who is going to live with whom? I couldn't figure it out even after thinking for a while, and my husband said to me as I remained silent. It's about living with my parents. I was stunned. Did we talk about that? No, but... There's no way he could know about a conversation that never happened. My husband continued, ignoring my confusion. My sister is taking care of my mother at home right now, but she'll get married eventually. My father has passed away, and I'm the eldest son, so we can't avoid living together in the future. It would be better for us to live together sooner rather than later. It's true that I wasn't promised that we wouldn't live together when we got married. But does that mean he can just bring up something so important like it's nothing? We ended up living in an old house with his bedridden mother and sister. It didn't seem like a great property by any means, but it was time to renew our lease on the apartment we were living in. And so, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law Selena ended up living together in their family home. Around two weeks later, I was assigned to make lunch without realizing it. Oh, risotto for lunch today? I replied, yes. I thought it would be easy to eat. I hate risotto throw it away. Huh? She snorted and turned away. She said she hated risotto, but didn't she eat it when my sister-in-law made it the other day? Then I was asked to help move the wheelchair and was told that I was rough or scared because it was shaking. I don't remember moving it violently. My sister-in-law started a part-time job suddenly after we started living together. She must have intended to return to society by pushing me to take care of her from the beginning. Before we got married, my husband told me that we should retire from work because we had to prepare for marriage and wanted children in the future. I regret quitting my previous job. In short, I was deceived by this family from the beginning. They probably intended to make me a housewife and take care of their parents. Now I'm exhausted all day long by my mother-in-law's demands and more tired than when I was working. There is no room for having children like this. When I thought about consulting with my husband about my relationship with my mother-in-law, he took the initiative. Hey Lily, can't you be a little kinder to your mother? What do you mean? It's not like I'm being cold. My mother feels like you hate her. She's scared when you glare at her. After all, a mother-in-law is probably a nuisance to a new bride. I don't mean that at all. I want to get along with her. Hmm. But my mother says she's scared of you. No matter how you feel, maybe you're not compromising enough. I didn't mean to stare at her when she said that any menu doesn't taste good or she hates this menu or anything like that during lunchtime. But honestly, I'm feeling down too. Maybe that showed on my face. Maybe it's your fault then. Don't make menus that your mother hates. I asked in advance about what menus she doesn't like and when Selena made it before, she ate it properly. Maybe your seasoning is bad? When Selena made it before, she told me to throw away any menu that she ate when I made it without eating even one bite. It's not just a seasoning problem. Don't get angry. If my mother hates it, that's all there is to it. 
you have a problem. Reflect on yourself. Well, that's the end of this conversation. Get along with your mother. Saying that, my husband went to take a shower. When I think back on the words my husband said, it was as if I was the only one at fault. I was tired of it, so for the first time that day, I went back to the bedroom before my husband. I didn't want to see his face more than necessary. I tried my best. Since we were living together, I thought I would try a little harder to compromise with my mother-in-law and not think of her words and actions as bullying. However, my mother-in-law's words and actions gradually became worse. She would deliberately spill food and say things like, hurry up and wipe it off. You're slow, or it's too bad to swallow. She even blew something that my mother-in-law had put in her mouth once onto my face. When reading books on caregiving, it seems that people with dementia are more likely to exhibit such aggressive behavior, but my mother-in-law was just weak in her legs and waist. To be honest, I don't think there is any need to take care of her so much. Of course, I have no experience or knowledge of caregiving at all. It's just a shallow knowledge that I learned after coming to this house. That's why I was following what my husband and sister-in-law told me at first, but once I suggested to them that, it's not that we should do everything, but it would be better if we supported our mother to do something herself so that she wouldn't get weaker, because caregiving books also describe that, excessive caregiving leads to a decline in physical function and disuse syndrome. For example, if you repeatedly move around in a wheelchair when you can walk a little bit, your leg and waist muscles will weaken and you will not be able to move on your own. I suggested it in good faith, because I don't think my mother-in-law wants such a thing either, but my sister-in-law said angrily. No way. She's getting weaker day by day. It seems that she suddenly became weak around the time we started living together. What nonsense. But there was no one on my side. She used to eat meals by herself before, but now she needs care, so understand her more. That's how he ended up scolding me too. Then you take care of her. Your mother-in-law will surely recover immediately, goes without saying what I thought. In short, my mother-in-law's bullying started before I came to this house. One day, the mother-in-law said, it hurts. When I changed her diaper in the morning, she said that I had pulled her leg and scratched my face because of it. The area around my forehead and eyelids became hot and I felt that it was injured. To make matters worse, during that time, my mother-in-law threw her dirty diaper at me. It doesn't hurt just to remove the tape from the diaper. I immediately realized that it was just a false accusation. You really don't have any cuteness as a daughter-in-law. You should leave this house soon. David didn't need a wife like you. Finally, I understood why she hated me after hearing what my mother-in-law shouted. She just didn't want her son to get married. Looking back, my mother-in-law was happy when she saw my husband in a tuxedo at the wedding and said, you look like your father. She may be superimposing her deceased husband on her son. It's not worth throwing dirty things away for taking away an important son. I didn't pull your leg, mother-in-law. I didn't even touch your leg. If you don't like me, you can ask Selena to take care of you instead. When I said that, my mother-in-law shouted. Oh no. You're blaming the elderly like that. You're just a stranger. You're not kind to me at all. You're a terrible daughter-in-law. Didn't you scratch me first, mother-in-law? My mother-in-law glared at me. If it were my usual self, I would have been a little scared of this look. But this time, no matter how I thought about it, my mother-in-law was wrong. I appreciate your words, but it's impossible for your body to hurt just by removing the tape from the diaper. I've been paying close attention so that it doesn't hurt because you said the same thing before. If it really hurts, maybe there's something wrong with your nerves? I think you should go to the hospital. What did you say? You're a terrible daughter-in-law. My mother-in-law pulled my hair and shook it back and forth. With strength that I couldn't believe came from someone bedridden, my forehead hit the edge of the bed many times. It hurts. It hurts. Mother-in-law. My mother-in-law shouted. This. This. How about becoming a daughter-in-law like this? 
Have you decided to leave the house? Considering my mother-in-law's physical strength, it was probably only about 5 minutes at most, but it felt like 15 minutes. My head was shaken and hit many times over and over again, and when I was released, my vision was slightly distorted and flickering. Come on, change the diaper if you've reflected. Who would do that? I was annoyed and left it alone. As a result, she made a mess and the house was filled with a strange smell. So I reluctantly took care of my mother-in-law for my own sake. I thought as I watched my mother-in-law laugh arrogantly. That's fine. There is news that staff members sometimes hurt users in nursing care facilities, but I understand that feeling. If my mother-in-law doesn't like the fact that her son got married, she won't like me either. I was hoping that someday it would work out somewhere, but it was naive. Tonight, I will tell my husband again about what happened so far and request to dissolve our cohabitation. If he says no, there is a way to meet my mother-in-law's wishes. Maybe both my mother-in-law and I will be happy. That night, before I could talk to my husband, my mother-in-law called my sister-in-law, who had returned home earlier, my husband, and me. We all gathered in the living room, but I had a bad feeling. What's wrong? Can't you eat first? My husband also held my mother-in-law's hand and asked. What happened? Tell me anything. That daughter-in-law. That daughter-in-law. My sister-in-law and husband must have felt uncomfortable with my mother-in-law calling me by name and then calling me a daughter-in-law. The eyes of the two people looking at me were very cold. The daughter-in-law pretends to be a caregiver and hits me while I'm bedridden. Even if it hurts, she says it's because of caregiving. She doesn't understand because she's not a mother-in-law. I was shocked by her words. It was me who raised my hand first even though it hurt. Even if I said it hurt, she wouldn't stop saying, you're an annoying daughter-in-law. Despite this, my mother-in-law cried like an actress, pointing at me as if she were the victim and said to my husband and sister-in-law. That daughter-in-law is scary. I'm done with her. No, that's not true. I didn't do anything like that. Look at this wound on my forehead. It was scratched by my mother-in-law. That daughter-in-law did it herself. She's blaming me and wants to kick me out of here. So I'm going to talk to David and Selena right away. Will you believe me? Both of you? My mother-in-law shouted over my words, and my husband and sister-in-law remained silent. But looking at their faces, I knew the answer without asking. They looked at me like they were looking at something disgusting. I can't believe it. Doing something like that to mom is the worst. This marriage is a failure. That's right, brother. Why did you marry such a woman? Poor mother. I woke up now. When mom said that Lily was being cold to her the other day, I should have broken up with this wicked wife. Sister-in-law agreed with her brother's words and eventually both of them began to condemn me, saying, we don't need a wicked wife here, so get out. Oh, they agreed with me for the first time. I think so too. Even though we're newlyweds, if I say something like this, I might be told that I have no patience. But if I can't talk to my husband about it, I was thinking of getting a divorce. My love for my husband, which I thought would last a lifetime, is not just cold, but freezing like it was put in the freezer. Sure, I'm happy to. I'll agree to a divorce. I'll give you back to your beloved mother, I declared, looking into my husband's eyes after I had come to terms with everything. My selfish husband seemed to dislike being dumped himself. Calm down. He said with a serious face, but I ignored him. As long as I had my valuables, I was fine. I put only my cell phone in the bag I always use. My wallet and bank book were already in there, and I could get clothes and other things after leaving this house. I'll get out of this house as fast as possible, even if it's just for a second or a nanosecond. My head was completely overheated, so emotionally, I left the scene at a speed faster than light. After leaving my in-laws house and walking a little, I thought I would live with my parents for a while and took out my cell phone to call them. 
just then, my husband exclaimed. Oh no! When I turned around, smoke and fire were billowing out of my in-law's house. The area around my mother-in-law's room was particularly bad. Oh well, I thought. It was no longer my problem, so I didn't care what happened to that house. But the situation was like a comedy, and I couldn't help but grin. My mother-in-law had even made an ending to the story. My husband, sister-in-law, and mother-in-law rushed out of the house in a panic. When they saw me, my husband shouted. Help me. Although I would normally ignore them, I approached them because it seemed a little interesting. Then my husband begged me to call the fire department because he forgot to bring his cell phone. Why don't you go to the fire station and report it, mother-in-law? I suggested. Don't say stupid things at a time like this. Well, I don't think it's impossible. Look, I said, pointing my finger. My husband and sister-in-law looked at the same place at the same time. Huh? Mother? Why? My mother-in-law, who was supposed to be bedridden than due to weak legs and hips, was standing with her shoulders heaving and breathing heavily. After my mother-in-law's face briefly froze, she exclaimed. Ah. And her face turned pale. Mother-in-law, you can stand without a wheelchair or assistance now, I said. Did a miracle happen? What kind of miracle? You ran so well. Why don't you try participating in the senior division of a track and field competition? I suggested with a smile. In contrast to me, who was smiling, my family was speechless. It was terrible that my siblings rushed out of the house without even thinking about their mother, who was important to them. But if they were told that their bedridden mother had run away energetically, any guilt would disappear. It seemed that they had forgotten to call the fire department in their haste, but it looked like the neighbor who had come out in a hurry had already contacted them. I asked my family-in-law, what do you think the cause is? My husband also wondered. Why is that? Yes, the black smoke is coming from my bedridden mother-in-law's room, not the kitchen or anywhere else. There shouldn't be anything that would normally catch fire. It's probably your mother-in-law's cigarette. When we were called to talk, I went to assist her in her wheelchair and I could smell a faint cigarette odor in the room. What? She should have quit smoking since she became bedridden. Upon hearing my words, my siblings immediately looked at my mother-in-law. Hey, mother-in-law. Actually, you can walk, can't you? Well, today was the first time I saw you walking. You know, when Selena goes to the convenience store to buy cigarettes, she buys a carton of them and I thought they were running out too fast. So while cleaning up, I regularly checked Selena's shelf in her room and found that the cigarette box was decreasing even though Selena wasn't using them. That means... When we were alone in the house during the day, my mother-in-law and I, I noticed that the cigarette box, which had seven cigarettes before I left, had only six left and there was a faint cigarette smell coming from my mother-in-law. She must have been stealing cigarettes when no one was around, probably long before we arrived, my mother-in-law's eyes swam when she heard this. Also, mother-in-law hated the smell of diapers and wanted to put strong air fresheners in the room. She was also concerned about bad breath due to aging and used mouth spray frequently. She also preferred hand creams with strong fragrances, I added. Upon hearing this, my husband and sister-in-law shouted in unison, get rid of the cigarette smell. They seemed to have given up, and my mother-in-law apologized while crying, while my family-in-law was amazed by my mother-in-law's behavior, I asked my husband, was her leg injury caused by a fracture? Weren't you worried? Yeah, they said she could walk again after it healed, but her legs suddenly got worse and worse. I thought she was getting old, so I increased my visits home. So she got a taste of it. Your mother-in-law loves you. If you hadn't taken her word for it and taken her to the hospital, she wouldn't have pretended to be bedridden, my mother-in-law neither denied nor affirmed my words and began to tremble. Seeing this, my siblings realized everything and shouted at my husband and sister-in-law, you tricked us. 
While firefighters were desperately trying to put out the fire, my family-in-law continued to argue without worrying about people or the house. Although the house was only half burned down, the family relationship was completely destroyed. In the end, my mother-in-law was abandoned with the words, do whatever you want. After my husband learned everything, he apologized to me and said. I want to start over. But I refused him clearly, saying, I'm still angry that you didn't listen to me and blamed me for everything. I don't want to go back to how things were. After that, my husband and I divorced. My mother-in-law lost her home, and my husband was forcibly placed in a nursing home by his family with the words. I'll give you a home for your last days. However, my siblings have never visited him, and he is effectively estranged from them. Other families of residents probably visit regularly, and it must be the most painful thing for my mother-in-law, who loved her son so much, to see that. It seems that the cause of the fire that day was indeed a cigarette. My mother-in-law was smoking in bed that day and panicked when my husband returned home. She put the cigarette in a bag as usual, disposed of it and hid it in a place where no one would see it while I was out. However, on that day, she had run out of bags. In a hurry, she threw the bag out of the window of her room without putting out the fire. It spread to nearby grass and trees, and as expected, it spread to the neighboring house as well. My mother-in-law was charged with arson and ordered to pay a fine. It's true that if you curse someone, you'll fall into the same hole. But my mother-in-law doesn't have the money to pay the fine. In addition, they were also sued for damages by their neighbor. My husband and sister-in-law had to shoulder all of these costs even though they didn't have their own home and were forced to throw away their property because of my mother-in-law. As a result, my husband moved to a cheap apartment, and my sister-in-law happened to have a dormitory at her part-time job, so she moved there. However, my husband's apartment, which he was very scared of, became an accident site after about two weeks of living there when an unidentified body was found from the second floor room. My sister-in-law had been stalked by a 40-year-old single man who lived in the same dormitory before and had received police attention for it. He fell in love with her and followed her for several years even after she changed jobs. Although no one wished for anyone to be unhappy, everyone ended up unhappy. So I think it's important to care about people after all. They say that if you do something kind for someone, something kind will happen to you too. My husband and sister-in-law, who had been so unhappy, came to me once and talked about their own lives and asked me to lend them money, but of course I refused. We're divorced now, and we're strangers, so I can't help them. After my divorce, I decided to change jobs. I had been an office worker before, so I thought I would do the same this time, but it was difficult to get a job offer even for experienced people in popular fields. So I decided to change jobs to sales, and I have been working hard in sales ever since. It's a company that will promote women if they work hard, so there is a sense of accomplishment, and even though I was inexperienced, I am now a department manager. I was praised for doing such a great job even though I had no know-how when I joined the company as a mid-career hire and surpassed even people who joined the company as new graduates of the same age. Maybe it's because I learned how to deal with difficult people after my marriage. Even with people who everyone hates or is afraid of, there are times when I enjoy being involved with them. Maybe I've become more courageous. I'm done with marriage. But instead, I met a lot of nice people through work. On Friday nights, we go out drinking, and on weekends, we go out to play. Maybe I'm having more fun than when I was young. Many people lament being single, but it seems to suit me very well. At this point, I'll become the world's happiest single person. Oh. Am I not a single person because I'm surrounded by people? Well, as long as it's fun.